Has the Garlock Fault Awakened? On January 18, 2026, a series of tremors rattled the high desert north of Bakersfield, culminating in a magnitude 3.6 earthquake near Johannesburg, California. Although modest in size, the Nine Quake Swarm has seismologists asking probing questions. Is this just a minor readjustment or an ominous harbinger along a long dormant fault? Could these jerks of the earth mark subtle fault creep building toward a bigger slip? Or might groundwater and stresses transferred from other earthquakes be at play? The answers lie in the Garlock Fault's unique geology and history. On that January morning, the United States Geological Survey recorded a magnitude 3.6 Tembla at a depth of about 3.9 kilometers, roughly 2.4 miles, approximately 15 kilometers, or about 9.3 miles, west-southwest of Johannesburg. Within the next two hours, it was followed by additional shocks, a magnitude 3.1 and a magnitude 2.9, all in the same locality, plus several smaller earthquakes. In total, at least nine shocks were catalogued that day, all clustered along the Garlock Fault zone. All were shallow, only a few kilometres or a few miles deep, and very localised, with no felt reports of damage. Yet their timing and location on one of Southern California's major, though normally quiet, faults have drawn scientific interest. The Garlock Fault is a left lateral strike slip fault about 250 kilometers long, roughly 160 miles. It runs east to west across Southern California, forming the northern edge of the Mojave Desert Block and framing the southern front of the Sierra Nevada and basin and range terrain. In left lateral motion, the land north of the fault moves west relative to the southern side when viewed by an observer facing the fault. Instrument measurements show the Garlock Fault slips only slowly, a few millimetres per year on average. In practical terms, that is on the order of about seven millimetres per year, roughly one quarter of an inch annually of accumulated movement. Geologically, the fault behaves in a segmented way. Some stretches appear creeping, slowly slipping without earthquakes, while others seem locked. The longest stretches of the Garlock Fault still await a major rupture. Because of its length and slip rate, the Garlock Fault can, in principle, generate a very large earthquake. Seismic hazard experts estimate that a full-length Garlock rupture could reach a moment magnitude between about 6.8 and 7.6. Some media accounts have even stressed that the Garlock fault is capable of producing a magnitude 8 event, though official models tend to cap its probable maximum in the mid-7 range. For now, however, the Garlock Fault's modern record is astonishingly tame. No earthquake of any size has ruptured the Garlock Fault to the surface in the historical record. The most recent notable shock occurred in 1992, a magnitude 5.7 earthquake near Mojave that is thought to have been triggered by the distant lander's earthquake two weeks earlier. Otherwise, only a handful of smaller earthquakes, mostly triggered or induced, have been recorded on the Garlock Fault in the past century. In short, the Garlock Fault is a sleeping fault, potentially dangerous but remarkably quiet on human timescales. So, where does the January 2026 swarm fit? Geologists know that even creeping segments and quiet faults can release stress in clusters of minor earthquakes. Earthquake swarms, many small tremors without one clear main shock, often signal that a fault is slowly adjusting or being pushed by fluids or distant shaking. In this region, there is precedent. Notably, the July 2019 Ridgecrest earthquake sequence triggered subtle changes 
on the Garlock Fault. Satellite data and seismic monitoring showed that after the magnitude 7.1 Ridgecrest earthquake, the Garlock Fault experienced shallow creep and an earthquake swarm. In other words, the Ridgecrest shocks destabilized the Garlock zone, nudging it out of dormancy. Scientists noted that the Garlock Fault had begun moving for the first time on record after 2019, producing a substantial earthquake swarm and a bulge in the ground. As one Caltech geophysicist put it, we have never seen the Garlock Fault do anything. Here, all of a sudden, it changed its behavior. That earlier case shows how remote triggering can work. A large earthquake elsewhere redistributed stress into the locked portions of the Garlock Fault. In January 2026, however, no recent magnitude 6 earthquake looms in the immediate vicinity to suggest a clear trigger. There were a few modest earthquakes earlier in January near Johannesburg, such as a magnitude 3.1 event on January 13, but nothing on the scale of Ridgecrest. It is possible this swarm is simply a self-driven adjustment of the fault. One idea is that an enclosed segment of the Garlock Fault was creeping, building up local stress until a patch slipped in the magnitude 3.6 event, then loading neighbouring sections into a sequence of follow-up earthquakes. This pattern differs from a classic main shock aftershock chain, where the largest earthquake comes first. Instead, it is characteristic of swarms on faults that have mixed locked and creeping behaviour. Human activity can also influence the Garlock Fault. Historical studies reveal that groundwater extraction in the Fremont Valley, north of Edwards Air Force Base, has previously triggered local slip on the Garlock Fault. In fact, a United States Geological Survey paper from the 1980s documented six abrupt spikes in well water levels between 1978 and 1982. These were interpreted as small creep events on a Garlock-related fault. Each such event moved the fault by only millimetres to about one centimetre, roughly a few hundredths of an inch to about four-tenths of an inch, but together they added up to about 20 to 50 millimetres of slip, roughly three-quarters of an inch to nearly two inches over those years. In other words, even subtle changes in subsurface pressure were enough to induce Garlock Fault movement. It remains unclear whether any recent water pumping or extraction may have perturbed the area of the January 2026 swarm, but the precedent shows the Garlock Fault is sensitive to fluid pressure changes. Geologically speaking, the January swarm likely represents a tiny release of strain in the Garlock Fault system. The magnitudes involved, mostly in the 1 and 2 range, with the largest at 3.6, are far below what could cause any regional damage, but they matter scientifically. Small earthquakes and swarms can illuminate hidden processes. For example, the fact that this swarm occurred along a stretch of the fault that includes creeping segments could hint that these earthquakes are part of a silent slip. In that scenario, fault segments inch along slowly, invisible without instruments, occasionally stalling and then jerking, producing swarms instead of clear main shocks. What is critical is monitoring what happens next. Geologists will watch whether the swarm tapers off normally, as many swarms do, or if it seeds larger earthquakes. So far, there is no sign of any event above magnitude 3.6. Satellite geodesy and local seismic networks may help detect any continuing deformation. In the longer term, paleoseismic data show that the Garlock Fault has broken in the past, leaving fresh scarps only every few hundred to thousands of years. That means each small cluster of events is just one snapshot of a very slow and very long cycle. For science enthusiasts, 
This swarm is a reminder that even faults considered quiet still accumulate strain. The January tremors along the Garlock Fault are too small to be newsworthy on their own, but they provide clues. As experts often note, the Garlock Fault remains a potential earthquake powerhouse, one of the most obvious geologic features in Southern California, even if it seldom makes headlines. Every jiggle and every spike in instrumentation helps scientists understand its behavior. Will the Garlock Fault roar one day with a much larger earthquake? Current models suggest it can produce at least a magnitude 7 event or so when it finally breaks fully. Today's tiny earthquakes on January 18, 2026 may be mere whispers of strain adjustment, but seismologists will be listening closely. After all, as one researcher observed of the Garlock Fault's sudden stirrings in 2019, we do not know what it means. Yet every bit of data brings us closer to understanding this enigmatic fault. If you found this analysis informative, please like, share, subscribe, and tap the hype icon to help this video reach a wider audience.